DJI have just released yesterday with the new release of the Air 3S, the latest fly app 1.15.0. And that's what today's video is all about. Is there any changes? Is there anything new? Let's do this. So hello and welcome once again to the channel on this horrible day over here in the UK. Anyway, on with the video. And as I've just said, the latest fly up 1.15.0 has been released yesterday alongside the release of the Air 3S. What does it mean? Well, obviously it means that there's a new fly up for the phones, for Android and for Apple, but also there's firmwares for the DJI RC2, the DJI RC N2, and also the N3, which I don't have. But if you guys have got the Neo with the N3 controller, there's a firmware available for that as well. However, on with the video, what's it all about? Well, there is a few subtle changes to the fly up, which I'll go into a little later on in the video. However, the updates. So on the RC2, 0401000. Now it's a little bit tricky to get this update installed on the RC2 and I'll come on to that in a short while. Also on the N2 controller uh, you have to actually have it connected to a drone for it to bring and populate that firmware update as well and I did that with the Air 3. <laughs> what a fantastic drone this is. A little more about that a little later on in the video. So I did the updates and I did a flight test on the Mini 4 Pro, this little fella just here, and also on the Mini 2 as well, because some of you was having problems with the speed and I wanted to see if that was been uh, corrected and uh, I should be showing that a little later on in the video as well. Right, let's get straight into it and find out exactly what the changes are and what you need to do. So here we go then with the RC2 first. When you first open the control rule, you will get this pop-up open and that's basically telling you what's actually added added support for the dji a 3s as we know compatible for this controller and the other two controllers as i've just mentioned so once you start the download you think that everything's going to happen as you can see it's downloading the updates and it does it quite quickly which i find a little bit confusing actually because these updates do actually take a fair amount of time especially this one being over I think it was 1200 meg in the end, but I'll show you in a minute what I was talking about. Once it's finished downloading, it tells you that it's been downloaded, the actual fly app. Uh, and then when you click the install now, basically that restarts the controller. But mine didn't. So what you need to do is you need to go back in the controller. And then what you need to do is you need to click on the profile button and then go into settings. Now you can see down here, that it has actually installed 1.15.0 but it hasn't put it onto the actual firmware itself so by clicking the check firmware updates it will then populate the new firmware available so i just thought to bring you this bit in the video just to make sure that you do it correctly because otherwise you might think you've downloaded it when you click that update previously to this but it doesn't actually install the firmware so just a little tip for you there if you're struggling to find the, the correct firmware. So once you click the update, then it brings the new firmware available, which is the one that I've just showed you earlier in the video, the version 04.01.000. Once that's all finished and downloaded, you can then connect to the aircraft and you can fly as you would normally do. So moving on to the first test flight today, on the Mini 4 Pro. It's just a very, very short flight. As I said, the weather is abysmal here in the UK today. And as you can see, it's really, really murky out there. And then once it gets to a certain altitude, you'll notice that you get low visibility fly with caution. And it does actually, at some point, it knocks the obstacle avoidance off. Anyway, as you can see on screen on the new UI, you have just there the new focus track uh, feature and they've altered the height and the distance. Um, so that's the focus track enabled now. As you can see, there's lots of plus signs, so it's actually scanning. This is a bit like the old subject scanning, to be fair, with 
And to be quite honest with you, I think it's a little bit too busy. You still can draw a green box around your subject if you want to, going into spotlight or, or point of interest and also active track as well. Obviously, I've not been able to test the active track just due to the weather. It's very, very hazy and there's a lot of mist in the air. But as you can see there, it's, it, it's finding objects all over the place. And as I've just said, the, the height and the distance, that's now been grouped together. It's a bit like the old Go4 app we used to use on the Phantoms years ago. I don't know, it seems to have gone back a little bit in time, in my opinion. But it does actually fly okay. I have took it around the, the neighbourhood. I didn't go out on location. It was pretty pointless. But as you'll see in a minute, when I uh, actually go a little bit closer to this moving traffic, you'll notice that these plus signs start to get a bit all over the place. Uh, there's one coming down the street, just here. it's just picked it up. And it, it, in my opinion, it's very difficult to select a subject unless you've got something that's on its own. As you see there, it's trying to chase that car down the road. And, and this, as this van comes around the corner, it actually does follow it. Uh, but actually trying to, to click on one of those plus buttons is quite uh, difficult. As you saw there, I, I completely missed it. So it seems a little bit erratic to me, but we'll see, time will tell with that one. But just in a nutshell, that's the Mini 4 Pro. It did do its thing. I did test the speed out and the speed's absolutely fine on the Mini 4 Pro. And as you can see just here, we're, we're in normal mode and it's it's reaching its 22 23 mile an hour and it's not going any further so if you was having problems with the the mini 4 pro with the speed and the mini 3 pro uh, i can confirm that it's actually fixed that and i did do a test which i'm going to come on to in a minute on the mini 2 because on my last video with the dgi near when i did a return to home test um, it was showing uh, erratic speeds and you can see just here, I'm just doing a quick spotlight test and that works absolutely fine. So you can, if, it's, if there's not too many subjects around, you can actually select it quite well. But I just think that that focus track feature is a little bit erratic. Quickly moving on to the RC2N controller. You do actually have to connect to a drone for this to actually take effect. And I connected to the Air 3 and basically all you do there is connect as you would and there's the firmware available at 01000700 uh, fix some bugs <laughs> usual DGI scenario so that's just a, a quick tip I'm just going to move on now to uh, the quick flight test that I did with the Mini 2 just to confirm that that speed is now working correctly in 1.15.0 so quickly moving on then to the Mini 2 flight test and I just thought I'd just give you a little snippet of the actual speed of the Mini 2 because like I say in my last video I did with the return to home with the Neo it was uh, reading stupid mile an hour and as you can see just there it's absolutely fine it's in end mode normal mode and it's doing its normal 20 mile an hour speed in normal mode and I did quickly flick into uh, sports mode as well and that also is reading correctly as well so the good news is that DJI have actually fixed that little issue and quickly flipping into sports mode I did give it a little <laughs> blast around the, the estate as you can see and the sports mode speed is working exactly as it should I didn't actually quite get up to to full speed because of the weather but I can confirm that it is working absolutely no problem whatsoever so there you have it in a nutshell um, two firmwares or three firmwares for the controllers and also the fly outward date for the Apple phones and the Android phones as well um, it does fly okay a good friend of the channel Gavin HR he did report he had a, an instance where he couldn't turn off the the tracking um, but you know I suppose when you're in a situation where you lose signal then your controllers aren't going to respond uh, to the drone so but if you want to check that video out i shall uh, link it down in the description if you want to go and check his video out there it's quite uh, it's quite a good video it just shows you what can happen 
and what you can do in an emergency. So with the new features, I'm not too keen on the new display, the new UI with the height and the and the distance. I don't know why they've they've got seemed to me they've gone back in time. You've got that different UI on the altitude and the distance. They seem to have squashed it into a into a small space. And also the tracking wheel that that seems to be extremely large for some apparent reason. That's just my opinion on those couple of points. The new focus track, I seem to think, well, to be, to be quite honest with you, I think they've gone overboard with that one. It seems to be a little bit busy, as you saw in the video. There's pluses all over the place. And, they, and they're on and off all the time, and you're trying to select something. Well, I just think it's a little bit busy. But maybe you can let me know down in the comments what you think about that. Yes, you've still got the option of drawing that green box, as you used to do. And you've got the fact that you can actually use the subject tracking. Well, it's not called subject tracking anymore because that's been removed from the menus, as you saw. And also the fact that there's that many pluses around. It's, to me, it's a little bit confusing. However, time will tell with that one. So there we go. In a nutshell, it flies okay. I flew the Air 3. I flew the Mini 4 Pro. And also the Mini 2, and I can confirm that that speed issue has now disappeared. Well, it has for me, let's put it that way. So there we go. I hope you got something out of the video. And if you have, as always, don't forget, give us the old thumbs up. And if you're new around here, why don't you consider subscribing, dinging the dong, and all the rest of it that goes with it. I'm sure you know me by now. And you might like to watch those couple of videos I've chosen for you. And if you do, I shall see you over there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.